We're here today to talk to you about African swine fever and what would actually happen if that terrible disease actually penetrated our borders and got into our pig herd. With me today I've got Dr Sam Allen who is the Executive Manager of Emergency Preparedness at Animal Health Australia. I'm Kathleen Plowman, the Chief Executive Officer at Animal Health Australia. So Sam I have to say it gives me some level of comfort knowing that you've actually been involved in a few disease outbreaks in your previous role so you have a very good understanding about what producers might be going through right now, but more importantly, helping them understand what roles uh, government plays, what they can do on their farm, how it actually uh, turns out on the day. Yeah, thanks Kathleen. I think people are feeling anxious um, and nervous about what might happen if African swine fever does arrive. I think probably the most important thing to remember is that we do have two really important national agreements in place which underpin all of the emergency response. Um, number one would be the EADRA, the Emergency Animal Disease Response Agreement, and that's a nationally agreed um, process for managing the costs of mounting an emergency response. Uh, and the beauty of that is that it's all agreed for, you know, in peacetime, which means that a response can be stood up very, very quickly. Um, the other key thing is the OSVET plan set of resources. The OSVET plan really is a, a nationally agreed preferred response strategy for a range of different diseases and there is one for African swine fever. So we can take those manuals off the shelf and it gives a, a guide for how to um, mount an emergency response. The lead jurisdiction, so that the, um, the state where the disease is first detected will write an emergency response plan. They need to do that within 24 hours. That then goes to a national committee where it's discussed, the technical details, and then it goes to a higher level committee where they actually authorise the payment for the um, response to begin. It's really important that people understand that both the EADRA and the OSVET plan are agreed between industry and government. So industry has a say in the drafting of the, the plans and then if we actually have to mount a response, they will be there at the table and, and having input and a say in what actually happens. Uh, in your experience in your previous roles in disease responses, what would be the one piece of advice that you'd like to share with producers at that most concerning time in terms of what might be at their border? Right. I think the first thing that producers need to do is to make sure that they're monitoring their animals for any signs of ill health and to have a relationship with a veterinarian that they can call if there's a problem and also know the emergency disease hotline number. We're really relying on people notifying early. The next step I think as well is just to cooperate with your state jurisdiction. The um, emergency response, the operations of it will be controlled by the state that's um, you know, affected. It's all um, done under their own state biosecurity acts, so legally it's handled by each of the states. They will be determining exactly how the response rolls out. Um, they'll be following the OSVET plan, uh, but it's just impossible to tell people exactly what might happen until it actually happens. There's so many variables, so many possible scenarios that it's really difficult to give people a, a hard guide at this stage. Mm. Oh well thanks Sam. So uh, for producers uh, we all expect our government to be shoring up resources on the border right now and they are. For producers you can also shore up your own protection at your farm border. I suggest that you have a look at your biosecurity planning, make sure it's current, there are things you can be doing to improve that and strengthen that and I'd also have a look at your own business continuity planning as well. There's some great resources uh, out there, you can find those at Australian Pork Limited website or indeed at Animal Health Australia's website.